I've got to show you another docker for creating some really cool special effects on your shapes. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll head all the way up to the window menu up at the top here, and then down to dockers, of course, and then look for a docker called Fillet, Scallop, and Chamfer. Go ahead and open that guy up. This is the guy that you should get here. Before you can actually apply fillets and scallops and chamfers, if you're not sure what a chamfer is, by the way, it's like a bevel. It's like a, a 45 degree angle, right? So what I'm going to do is I will take my rectangle here. This is the guy that I'm going to work on here. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to get my, my circle right out of the way. Let's not even bother with him. Okay. Now, as I was starting to say there just a second ago, before I can use these special effects inside this docker, I have to take my shapes and I have to convert them to curves. So I'll take my blue rectangle here, and then of course I'll head up to arrange, and then all the way down to convert to curves. Okay, perfect. Now that this guy's converted to curves, I can head over to my docker and start applying some effects. So let's start off with the fillet there. That's the default operation there. You can set the corner rate radius or the amount that you want to round your corners by. You can stick with the default there or maybe what I'll do is I'll drop this down maybe to a quarter inch there and then click on apply and there's your result just like that. Sort of a, a down and dirty way to get that sort of that curved corner effect, right? Or maybe what I'll do is I'll undo here just by hitting control Z on my keyboard and maybe what I'll do is I'll switch this radius back to the default which is that half inch and then apply. There you go, something like that. Okay, very cool stuff. I'm going to undo once again control Z on my keyboard. There's the fillet. Let's do the scallop. I'll go and choose the scallop option here. And let's try the default and see what we get here. I'll click on apply once again. There's the scallop effect. So the scallop is going to cut in on the corners, this sort of a result here. Now, once again, I'll undo control Z on my keyboard. Maybe what I'll do is I'll reduce this down maybe to that quarter inch and then apply. There we go. Something like that, right? So you know what this might be neat for, by the way, is maybe some kind of a, you know, that reminds me of like a brass nameplate or something like that. But anyway, you get the idea here. I'm going to undo a bunch of times here go all the way back to where I started that's the scallop and then let's try the chamfer so that's the bevel as I was saying there and the distance is still set to that half inch there. I'll click on apply and there's my result. Now that's one heck of a cut into my shape. So I'll reduce this down to a quarter inch. There we go, something like that. So just some neat effects that you can apply to your shapes. Now let me show you something here because you can really do some wild things. I'm just messing around with rectangles at this point, right? I'm just going to get rid of this guy. What happens when you start messing around with more intricate shapes? Well, what's going to happen is you're going to wind up getting more interesting results, right? Now, what I'll do here is I'll take my star shape. I have not converted it to curves. This is something that I want to show you. I meant to show you this earlier. When you take a shape and you apply a tool or a command to it that requires it to be converted to curves, what happens is you're going to get a warning telling you that CorelDRAW is going to convert it to curves for you. So I have not converted this guy to curves. What I'll do is I'll switch my operation back to the fillet and let's go with the radius of a half an inch and I'll click on apply. There's the warning I was telling you about. Phillip scallop and chamfer can only be applied to undistorted curved objects. Would you like to automatically convert the object for use with this tool? Let's go ahead and click on OK. So it automatically converts it to curves there. Now we get a secondary warning here. One or more of the edges were too short to fill it. Please consider reducing the fillet radius. I'm going to click on OK. But I do get a result in any regard. This sort of odd looking distorted shape there, which is kind of cool. Now I'll undo this here and maybe I will reduce down my radius, maybe down to about a quarter inch. And let's try that. And I'm going to get these warnings again here. There we go. Maybe something like that, right? Maybe it's a little bit better. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you here is you can use these commands on normal shapes like rectangles and squares and things. But when you start using more intricate shapes, you can create some really cool special effects. Change up.